just want to tell you that you are very valuable and you are very unique and that's the one thing I want to tell you. Find your true value and, and actually heal your broken heart. Find back to who you truly are. Uh, but uh, uh, today too I, I just want to come with an encouragement and, and I have a website called Good News for Broken Hearts and I know that that's one of the things that uh, Jesus came to and came and said that he came to the brokenhearted to uh, to the poor he came to the to those who are, have, uh, are in captivity and he wants to set them free he wants to wanted to set them free uh, and so, so the heading of, of kind of my vision and, and also the ministry I'm a part of on the, on the internet uh, and, uh, and also where I work here in northern Thailand when I'm, I'm, I'm actually recording or rec I'm actually live right now but I'm also recording it uh, but uh, when I'm live now I'm actually in Thailand, in northern Thailand uh, so I'm, I'm working here and, and I, I'm, I'm, this is on my heart to uh, to help people to to get people to understand how valuable they are, they are how worth they are how much value they have and i'm working among a people group from myanmar called the shan people uh, and we are trying to reach them with the good news and the good news about there is a god who wants to heal your heart to set you free uh, who who can set you free from fear uh, who can help you uh, in every area in your life and, and that, that, that there is a good God and my focus on this uh, on my website uh, is uh, and also on my teachings you find on my website goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com it's encouragement I want to encourage people I will do some maybe in the future I will do some uh, seminars uh, and, uh, and do a little bit more deeper teaching uh, around these things uh, because I really want to see uh, I really want to see people free and sometimes we need to go a little bit deeper and I, I'm, I'm, I have subjects like uh, fear and uh, fear of rejections, re rejection about value, who we are, who you are, uh, and, and who God is. Uh, <coughs> and, <coughs> and I have some subjects that can help you to really start to understand who you are and really, yeah, so, so your heart can be restored. I believe there is a God who wants to restore you. He wants to restore you back. He doesn't just want to, uh, if you're not Christian, He wants to. He wants, wants you to become a new creation and discover the new creation that God has already provided for you. And, and you need to become a new creation. But, but actually, when you, if you are a Christian, you are a new cre creation already. And it's about, the Christian life is, is about to discover that there is, uh, that, you, that you are <laughs> um, a new creation. You are a new creation. And, and also, the, well, the things that that are connected is the way you look at God and this is very important the way you look at God and last time I'm our uh, last Sunday I was talking about um, uh, actually about uh, also about good, uh, God's goodness <laughs> that God is good all the time and 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 a very simple theology I said that God is good <laughs> and the devil is bad <laughs> all bad things comes from from the devil God, good things com comes from God because in, in James it, it's, a talk about, it's, it's talking about that all good and perfect gifts comes from above, it comes from God. Do not be deceived. Because there's many people who have been deceived about this. And because we have been deceived about the goodness of God, many people are not able to be free, are not able to be healed, because their picture of God is wrong. They believe in a God that are maybe judge judgmental, he judge you every time you sin, he holding sins up against you, uh, he hasn't for uh, forgotten what you did yesterday, he, uh, he, is, he is angry with you, he is not pleased with you, and we're trying to please God in a way, and, and we are afraid that we maybe have been begotten the unpardonable sin, and so on. There is there's many, many things that, that Christians are afraid of, not only Christians, but, but uh, many people are afraid of. They are even afraid of themselves. And that's maybe the one main cause that people are afraid of themselves. And they are afraid of shame, they are afraid of, afraid of guilt, and they try to avoid those things as much as they can. And sometimes they believe that the picture of God is that God is a person who gives them shame and, 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 and guilt and, and, and things like that that God is the one who puts that on you. God is behind shame. 
You know, God is not behind shame. Uh, there is there is something called regret, <laughs> and 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 it's good that we when we do something wrong that we regret regret what we do, but shame is not from God, and God wants to set you free from that. That's why He came. That's why you know, the reason why we have a broken heart is often because of shame, shame in our lives, shame of what we have done, shame of, of ourselves, uh, and we are angry at ourselves, and we hate ourselves. We don't like ourselves. Because we believe that the thing that we do, the things that we say, are who we are. And we, we, we believe in a way that God cannot love who I am. That people cannot, cannot, you can, cannot accept yourself. Because you believe all the, your actions, all the things you do, all the things you say, is who you truly are. But that, that's not true. The good news is that God has created you, created you in His image. And Jesus came so you can find back to your father and find back to, back to the true image that he has created you in. God has created you in his image. And he wants you to find back to that true image of who he truly, who you truly are. Who he is too, to, but who you truly are. But to find out who you truly are, you need to find about, about who God is. You know, because you are created in the image of God. And the image of God, that you have a God, it will reflect the way you look at yourself and the way you look at other people. Those three things are connected. So you need, you need to, to, to know your Creator. You need to know that God is good. And I, I, as a heading for this teaching today, I said that God is better or God is gooder. <laughs> God is better than you think. God is a much better than you think. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, some people, when, when, when you start, start to talk about the goodness of God, some people have said that, uh, yeah, we, we, don't, we, don't, we shouldn't talk too much about the goodness of God because uh, people can misunderstand it. And maybe they will go, uh, go out and sin. And, and the goodness of God is not the way that man look, looks at the goodness of God. And, and then we kind of, um, kind of uh, do this... Uh, we kind of distort it in a way. When we are saying things like that, and people believe things like that, we think that the goodness of God is deep, it's very deep, so deep that we cannot uh, kind of understand it. I, I believe that, you know, that the, the goodness and, and the love of God is deep, in a way. That it's, it's so deep that you, you can, but, but you, it's a discovery. It's not, a, not a deep in a way that you cannot understand it. That's the way many kind of people say, you know, it's so deep that you can almost cannot understand it. But that, that, that's not true. God is, uh, God's love is not deep, so deep that you cannot understand it or comprehend it in a way or understand, uh, understand it or deep that you, yeah, you but it, it's, it's, it's deep in a way that there is more to discover. It's more and more and more to discover. There's so much you can discuss, this discover about the true love of God, the goodness of God. And the, and, and the more you dig, <laughs> the deeper you get, the more happy you will get. <laughs> it's not like, like God is, is kind of... Yeah, sometimes people say that God has, has different sides. You know? we, we, we need to talk about the anger of God too. We need to talk about His judgment and things like that. But you know, all of these things are the love of God. Even the anger of God, you know, God, God is, can be angry. Angry is not a sin in a way. If your uh, sun goes down on your anger <laughs> and you keep your anger, it, it's, it's wrong. But, but anger towards sin is good. Anger about, uh, um, towards unrighteousness is a good thing. And God is angry at unrighteousness. And God is angry at sin, but, not, but He's not angry at you, and you need to see the difference. That you are not sin. You are, no, you are not sin. And, and, and that's the thing that we so often see wrong, or we, 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 we look at it in the wrong, wrong way. We think that we are sin, but we are not sin. Don't identify and think that you are sin. There is an identity, there is a, there, there is a um, how to say, there is a force called sin, but that's not you. And sure, then, you know, 
or everything that wants to do. If, if someone wants to come and, and do something wrong to my children or my wife, I will get angry because <laughs> I want to protect them. I am a husband and I want to protect my family, my children and my wife. I want to do anything to protect them and to help them. And I, I, will, I will get angry at things that wants to destroy them. So, and that's a part of love. It's not a, um, you have love here and then anger here, you know, it's, it's all a part of love. Love. And you need to discover more of what love, true love is, what God's love is. You need to know what God's love is. You need to know Him. And, and God is better, God is gooder <laughs> than, you t than you think. I know it's not not uh, not a correct uh, grammar, but but he is gooder, <laughs> he's better than you think, he's a lot better than you think, and he's there, there's more to discover. And I want to encourage you today, there's more to discover about God. Don't don't listen to to, to people to you say people who say that yeah, sometimes God leads you into deserts and he leads you into this thing to to teach you uh, a lot of things. He leads leads to he give you a sickness or he he you do something wrong or kind of cause something wrong in your life. Or um, some people are saying if you don't give the tent, God is God's punishment is upon, upon you, or God's curse is upon you. You will be cursed, or, or things like that. And and people are are mixing the old covenant with the new covenant. You know, I believe in in the new covenant that God has given us a new covenant, and that we are not under law any longer, but we are under grace. And that's that's my belief, that's my faith <laughs> in in God. That 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 that, that we are not. And the Bible tells us that, you know. Paul tells us that we are not under law, but under grace. And you know, even, even in, the, in the Old Testament, there is a, there is a guy called uh, David. But uh, David was a person in the, uh, in the Bible who has seen something. He had a revelation about God that people in his time really didn't have. In many ways. He saw many things. He, he even saw in Christ in many ways. And some of his, uh, what he's saying in the Psalms is kind of prophetic about, about Jesus even. Uh, but, uh, but he saw something about God that, that even in the Old Testament people didn't really see this. That's why, why, why David also is called the, the man, man after God's heart. He had understood something. And, and it wasn't that, God, that David was perfect, you know. He wasn't perfect. But he, he understood something about the love of God, about the goodness of God. And he understood that God is gooder than I actually can see. And he discovered something. And he was inspired to read, to, to write, for, for instance, uh, uh, Psalm 103. And I, I just want to read that for you today. Uh, because it said something about the goodness and, uh, f uh, of God. And, and actually, some, some, one thing that he's saying here was the one thing that actually, for some years ago, a, a friend of my, mine uh, gave me this verse. And it actually... It helped me to set, set me free. It set, it set me really free. So let, let's read it together. Uh, praise the Lord, my soul. All my innermost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits or all his good deeds. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your disease. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles the lord works righteousness and justice for all oppressed he made known his ways to moses his deeds to the people of israel the lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger abounding in love he will not always accuse nor will he harbor his anger forever he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our, our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us, our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him and this this is a great great psalm it's and it's even better than you believe than you think he, he's talking about he forgives you he will forgives you all your disease and heals you all all your disease 
But the truth is that when Jesus came, he did it. He did it already. And it's for you actually to receive it. It's for you to receive the healing that he has already provided for you. The forgiveness that he has already provided for you. And, and it says that he will not accuse forever or harbor his anger forever. And, and, and you know, he, he's talking about actually about Jesus too, that, he, that his anger was upon him. His wrath was upon him. That he, he took, took, took that. And, and he, he does not treat us according to our sins or repay us according to our iniquities or our sins in a way. It's the same thing actually. Iniquities is a kind of our wrongdoings. And, and this, uh, and actually that, that verse, it says a little bit different in different, different translations. So when I actually study the Bible, I use different, different translations. Uh, but, uh, but he's talking about that he has, he does not treat us as, as our sins deserve or he pays us according to our iniquities. What does that mean? What does that truly mean for, you, for us, for you? Because I, in my thinking before, I believe that God was still for condemning me. Condemning me for my sins. I felt I never reached up to a standard that God had for me. I felt there was something, always something more I had to do. I always felt that there was something more I should do. And I always felt that I could not reach up to, to God in a way or the, the perfect standard that he, he kind of demanded of me. I tried to live, I, I was thinking, God, I need to live a holy life. But I'm not able to do it. And I'm trying. And I always felt this thing, I always felt this shame, this condemna condemnation that I was not good enough, that every, everything I did was not good enough. And I'm coming from Norway and, and, and in Norway we, uh, we always felt, feel that, that there is something we are not good enough. There is always something better. If someone uh, comes to, to a Norwegian and says, uh, can you play piano? No, no, I cannot play piano. I only played piano for two years or three years, you know. I, and then and, and, and they can actually play piano very well, but they say that, no, I cannot, because I'm not perfect, you know. I ca cannot do it perfectly like, uh, like uh, some famous, uh, you know, singer or a famous pi piano, I don't remember, uh, and, uh, some famous uh, piano player right now, but <laughs> at, least, at least not uh, someone that lives right now. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, but, but I say, yeah, I cannot play really, really good, because I cannot play it perfectly. And that's the uh, kind of Scandinavia and, and, uh, and maybe a part of Europe too. Uh, many people are thinking like that. We need to be perfect. We try to be perfect. We try to be holy. If we only are holy enough, God will be, be ple pleased with us. And actually in another translation it says that he doesn't do with us according to our sins. It means he doesn't punish us. He doesn't... Uh, he doesn't do anything, he doesn't do, do anything wrong towards us, he, he, he doesn't hold them up and say that you did this, you did this, you need to repent, repent or else. God doesn't say that. He actually doesn't say that. You know in the New Testament it says, Paul said that it, it's, it, it is his goodness that leads to repentance. It's his grace, his goodness that leads to repentance lead us to repent, to, to, us, to turn around, to turn us to him. It's not his anger, he's not his, uh, the, the, the fear of punishment. No, the, God is love and there is no fear in love. But uh, in fear there is punishment, it says in, in 1 John 4.18. 4, in fear there is pun punish punishment. And uh, that's why, why, why God is not holding your sins and try to punish you for it. God punished your sins already. But even in the Old Testament, even before Jesus died, David saw this, this thing about God. That God is not dealing with us, he's, he's not punishing, punishing us according to our sins. The law did it. The law, law punished us according to, the, to our sins. But he actually saw that God was bigger than the law. <laughs> and he saw that, that actually God 
didn't treat us. He didn't punish us for our sins. He didn't want to punish us for our sins. And he doesn't want to. You know, sin in itself is punishment. When we do sin, sin will punish <laughs> us. You know, so the sin we do will, will punish us anyway. If you are unfaithful to your wife, I, I can guarantee you, it will come back to you somehow. Even in, if it's, if it's, uh, if it's uh, guilt or shame or, or, or you know, you, you, you probably will be, be discovered and, and it, it, your, your, your marriage maybe will break up. Your children will suffer if you have children and so on. So sin in itself will punish you. <laughs> but it's not the punishment from God. You, ha uh, you need to see the difference. God is not in the punishment business anymore. <laughs> He has done it once and for all. He has done it once and for all. God punished sin once and for all on the cross. And we just need to put our trust in what God has done for us. That your sin was punished for you already. You just need to trust in Him who did it for you. Everything is done for you. There's nothing you need to do anymore. The Christian life, I said this before, Christian life is not about trying to get it. Uh, how to say, it's not, it's not trying to be something you are not. It's discover what you already have become. The Christian life is a discovery, it's a journey, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a journey of discovery of who God is and who, who you truly are. God is not after you to punish you. He does, doesn't do, treat you according to your sin or didn't punish you according to your sins or repay you according to your iniquities. He doesn't repay you. He doesn't, he want to, he doesn't want to take revenge on you. Even if, if you have done something wrong against him, even. Maybe says, or says, in, in the past said something bad about him. Some people are afraid they have done their unpardonable sin because they, some, they are cursed towards God or they have done something wrong towards God. But let me tell you something. Remember Peter. He denied, he cursed even, that he didn't know Jesus. But did, did Jesus forgive him? Forgave him? Did he forgive him? Yes, he did. He had already forgiven him. And, he, and Jesus kind of needed to remind him about it. That's why he, 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 he had to, to tell Peter, do you love me? And he, told, he asked him three times, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, I do. And that, that's the only thing God is asking for. Do you still love me? I know you messed it up. I know you have said something you shouldn't have said. I know you have done something in your life that you should not have done. I know about your life, but I still love you. And, and he is just asking you, do you want to love me back? I love you. I have loved you first. Do you want to love me back? And you know the same thing if you read the Bible, you know that Jesus, you also remember this when it comes to God. Sometimes we read the Old Testament and, and, and when we only read the Old Testament, we can maybe get a wrong picture of who God is. Uh, for one thing, uh, we see God through the law many times. A lot of times we see God through the law. But the law didn't give a total picture of who God is. It gave something about uh, His holiness and, and, things, and things like that. And it showed us what holiness are in a way. But it also showed us that we are not able to, to live it in a way. But, but the law, uh, God didn't show Himself truly through the law. It showed something about us. That we needed a savior. <laughs> that was the thing that the law showed us. And, and, and also when you read the Old Testament, they, they didn't see truly. Many of the, 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 many of the people that write the, uh, the Old Testament, I think maybe David was one of, the, one of the few actually that really, really had a revelation, revelation about who God is in the Old Testament. But they, all of them didn't see the full picture of who God is. You can read about it, read about it in Hebrew. 
Many of them had faith, but they didn't see the promise. Who was this, this, this promise? They didn't see the promise. And who was the promise? The promise was Jesus. And in Hebrew 2, he's talking about that Jesus is the full representation of who God is. Okay, can, let, let, let me just uh, find it for you here. So, um, uh, let's see. Let's go to Hebrew 1. Hebrew is talking uh, actually about these things. You know, he's talking about um, the, the people of faith uh, who believed, and, and, but then they didn't see the promise. But now the, when Jesus has come, the promise has come. And Hebrew is, is actually uh, written to people who wanted to go back to the law, go back, go back to, the, to the way of, um, of, of the Jewish tra tradition and things like that. They wanted to go back. Uh, and, and then in Hebrew, in, in, in Hebrew in 1, 1, it says, In the past God, God spoke to our ancestors, to the prophets, at many times uh, in various ways. But in these days he has spoken to us by his Son, who he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom also, also he made the universe. The Son is the rad radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his power and powerful word after the provided purification for his sins. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. But it's very important here. He, he is the exact, exact, exact representation of his being. It means as Jesus is, so is God. And when Jesus came, he gave the full picture of who God is. So to truly, truly see who God is, you need to see to Jesus. And yes, the, the Old Testament, say, you can see part of, of who God is, and, and, and it, it gives a picture of God, and I don't say that you should throw away the Old Testament. I believe in the old, I, I already, the main scriptures today is taken from the Old Testament. So I'm not uh, talking about throwing away the Old Testament, but, but in the New Testament, we have a new covenant. We have a new, uh, we have a, a person that called Jesus, who really is the picture of who God is. And we need to look to Jesus to really find, find out who God is. And God, Jesus, is not holding your sins up against you. You can look at, at uh, in John, you can, you can see several stories about the one that was, was uh, caught in, in adultery, and, and said that, who condemn you to this woman? Jesus said to this woman, and he, she said, no one. And he said, no, ne neither do I. And he, he, Jesus was talking to a, to a, a wife, or a, a, not a wife, but, uh, but a woman, uh, that had, had had five men, and the one he was, she was staying with now is not, was not her husband. He, he, she had five men, and he, she had a, cohabitants, he <laughs> she was living with a man right now. And Jesus didn't condemn this woman either. See how God is, see how Jesus is. <laughs> and through Jesus you will see who God is. And God is, I will, I will quit now, I will stop uh, this teaching today, this encouragement today. But uh, I will just want to say to you that Jesus and God is better than you think. And find out, I will encourage you. Today is just an encouragement, it's not a deep teaching. But it's an, it's an encouragement, a speech today, that I have on, on, on Facebook. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I just want to say that God is gooder, <laughs> God is better than you think. And find out, try to find out more about who He is. And follow me on, on Facebook. Uh, follow me uh, on, uh, on this Facebook called uh, Bible Teaching Good News for Broken Hearts. Uh, so I have a Facebook page uh, called that, and I also on YouTube I have a channel uh, in my name, uh, Tore Johannesen. It's maybe <laughs> uh, on, on my website. Good news for uh, broken hearts. I have a link to my uh, yeah to to to, to this uh, this Facebook page. Um, so follow me. You can follow me on on Facebook too, about both, both my profile. And also on um, on yeah on good news for Bible teaching, good news for broken hearts, and also my website. You find my my teaching on website, uh, goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com. And I, I will try, as I said, I will try to do some weekly encouragements like this. And maybe it will not be every every week, but but I will try to do it uh, quite regularly. 
and I will do some seminar and things like that in the future. So, so spread, uh, and please feel free to spread this, this teaching, uh, spread this message around uh, on, on uh, wherever you can, you know, on Facebook, on, on YouTube and so on. Please feel free to do that. And I also have a podcast. I have a podcast. You can find it on iTunes or, or you can also find a link if you use something else than iTunes. Uh, so uh, I have a weekly, uh, putting out a MP, MP3 too, and I have a weekly podcast. So I will encourage you, uh, actually the podcast is, is often the most, uh, most the thing that, that, or the thing that people usually go to uh, and listen to. So I will, I will encourage you to do that. If you have an iPhone or if you have something else, uh, or Samsung or something like that, uh, you, you, can, you, you can have a podcast, uh, download the podcast app and, and download uh, my, my teaching on, on, on your phone. Uh, you can do that or or on your or, or ipad or on your computer so feel free, free to do that uh, and also in the end if, if you want to support uh, we actually need some uh, some support also to do the things that we do and this ministry i've called good news for broken hearts uh, we also need uh, support to do the things that we are doing on the internet and if you have been blessed by this uh, this uh, this ministry this this teaching uh, this encouragements feel free to give a donation. You can actually do it on PayPal. Uh, and there is also, also other ways you can do. And so you can contact me, contact me on Good News for Broken Hearts or on Facebook. Uh, and uh, and I, I will give you a account number too. You can actually give it to our account, num account number too. Here I live in Thailand. So, uh, so feel free to do that. And uh, still have a blessed uh, Sunday.